Merry Christmas. I wanted to visit with you a little bit about the story that is surrounding us in our churches and our culture as we prepare to celebrate the birth and, and remember the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. And one of the ways I thought we might do this today would be to remember the story using some materials from the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. And so what I have here is uh, the Nativity Box, and we'll open it up. You see this beautiful icon of the Mary and Child on it. So we begin with Luke chapter 1, beginning at the 35th verse. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. In the last few weeks in our churches, we have been remembering the story and we began with this, the story of the Annunciation in which we have the angel telling Mary that she's to give birth through the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's called the Annunciation. The next part of the story that we remember is also from Luke chapter 1, beginning at the 46th verse. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. This is a passage that comes after the angel visits Mary. Mary goes to visit with her friend Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is to give birth to the boy that we know as John the Baptist. And when Elizabeth greets Mary and they hug and embrace the child inside of Elizabeth, jumps and leaps, reminding us of the prophetic work of John the Baptist in the ministry that happens just before Jesus' ministry and baptism begins. This part of the story is called the visitation. The next part of the story that we remember is from Luke chapter 2, beginning at the sixth verse. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. This, of course, is the celebration of the nativity. The next part of the story that we remind ourselves of in our churches and upon which we are right about to have our celebration of the Nativity in all of our congregations across the Diocese of Texas, in which people and family and friends will come together to celebrate, to sing hymns and songs and carols and remind themselves of the birth of Jesus. But Christmas just begins here. All of this part of the Nativity story happens in Advent. After this, we remember the next part of the story, which is called the presentation of the t at the temple, in which after his birth, Jesus is taken uh, to the temple. This is from Luke chapter 2, beginning at the 29th verse. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, 
which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. The Song of Simeon is what we call that passage, and it reminds us of how Simeon sees Jesus and a prophecy is fulfilled in which God promised that Simeon would see the Savior before he died. And so in the, pa- in the icon, we have a picture of a Simeon holding the Christ child. Then we have the last part of our days of Christmas, our 12th night celebration, the adoration of the Magi in which the three kings come to visit. This concludes the Christmas celebration and the 12 days of Christmas. And this is the passage from Matthew 2, beginning at the first verse. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. So that's the last part of our story of the nativity. Each one of these is important. And what it reminds me is that in the lives of ordinary people, the Christ child came and was born, a gift of grace to all who would receive him. This is what the story tells us, just about faithful people who open their hearts to the possibility of a miraculous incarnation of God in Christ Jesus. So as you celebrate with your families and friends, as you celebrate in the communities of our congregations and in uh, the communities of your friendship circles, I invite you to just be open to the grace which is being offered, the Christ child, an incarnation of a living word which is even now being told and retold over and over again in the midst of your relationships. So from Joanne and Kaisa and Zoe and I, from all of the uh, bishops and their families, from your diocesan staff, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and know that this season and this time in our Christian communities will bless you.